with you and I'd like to talk today about integration by parts. Now I get a lot of questions about integration by parts so hopefully this video will help a little bit. And before I go through the details of the method I want to back up a little bit and talk maybe about uh, a bigger issue and that bigger issue is why is integration so difficult? Because it is. Integration is more difficult than differentiation. Well why is that? Well here's, here's at least part of the reason. Um, if you look at a derivative derivative, there's a, there's a simple expression for a derivative, and we've all seen it. Take the limit is delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. That's it. That's the expression for a derivative. Okay? And it doesn't matter what function you, you, you've got in front of you. You can stick any function you want into that expression and you'll find the derivative. Now maybe there's some algebra that you're going to have to go through to kind of clean it up a little bit. But any expression can be put through here and you're going to come out with the derivative. Now there's also a couple of very simple universal rules for differentiation. There's a chain rule and a product rule and a quotient rule which is related to the product rule. Um, and those work all the time. So between this basic definition and a couple of very simple rules on how to do uh, derivatives of more complicated expressions, you, there, there's hardly a function you can't take a derivative of without, without a little bit of work. It's generally not too hard. Okay? This exists for derivatives. There is no expression like this for integrals. Integrals are what's called an inverse function. When you're, tr when you're finding the uh, integral of f of x, and let me write this out, if I have an integral f of x dx, okay, what I'm trying to find is find me a function whose derivative is f of x, okay, derivatives and, and, and integrals are opposite one another, so uh, when you're trying to take the integral of f of x, it's equivalent to, it is essentially the same thing, as saying find me a function whose derivative is that. Well that's a whole nother problem uh, much different than writing out the derivative. Okay? There's, there's no simple uh, closed form expression like there is for a derivative. There's, no, there's nothing like that for an integral. What we have instead is a collection of methods that sometimes work and sometimes don't. Integration by parts is one of those methods. Integration by parts does not always work. Okay? It works enough of the time that it's worth learning. Now there's other things that, there's other uh, 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 methods that, that also work at least part of the time. And so it, what you wind up having to do is memorize a bunch of these, these uh, various methods for integration and try, try them one after the other until you can find one that works. There's no universal one. That's why integrals are harder than derivatives. Okay. So one of these methods is called the integration by parts, and it looks like this. If you want to integrate u dv, that's u v minus integral of v du. Okay, now, when I first when I saw this for the first time, probably in high school, I looked at this and went, huh, what's u and v? u and v are just two functions. This is, okay, u and dv in this case are also two functions. And so on this side of the expression, it's assumed that I have an integral that I can write out as u, u is one function, and dv, well that's the, the derivative of some other function v. If I can break my this down into u and v or u and dv, I can write this out, okay? Where well, that's u and v and that's v du, so it's uh, v times the deriv derivative of u and I have to integrate that. Well, first thing I, I want, remember wondering is where in the world did this come from? This looks like it's just magic. It just dropped out of the sky. Well, it didn't. Okay. Now, I don't know who the first person was to think of this. It certainly would not have been me. If it was up to me, we'd still be waiting. Um, so let's do this. Okay, I have a function u times v. It's made out of two sub-functions, I guess you want to call it. It's the product of, of u times v, where u and v are different functions. And I should pause a second here. I'm going to show you the mechanism, uh, the, the proof, to show you where integration by parts comes from. One thing I don't expect you to do is to anticipate where it's coming from. I'm going to show you the, the, the proof you always see, and it's very simple. It's only three lines. 
Where did it come from? I have no idea. Who was the first person to think of this? I have no idea. Whoever it was was brilliant. I never would have thought of this. But once I show it to you, you can at least see that it is true. And um, the, the uh, uh, derivation is really, really simple. So I've got a function that's the product of u times v. Okay, if I take the derivative of that, okay, well that's, let's see, that's v du plus u dv. Okay, so far so good. Well, next thing to do is, you know, how do you make this d go away? All these d's here, how do you make d's go away? Well, you integrate, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, that's the integral of the derivative of uv, u times v. Okay, and I'll tell you here in a second how we're going to deal with that. Oops. v du plus integral of u dv. Okay, so all I've done is integrate both sides. No problem. Well, derivative and an integral are the opposite of one another, yes? So if I take the integral of a derivative or the derivative of an integral, either one, they cancel out. So the integral of the derivative of uv is just uv. Okay, u times v. Remember, this is just a function made out of two other, that's the product of two functions, u and v. Okay, well these I don't know what to do with yet, so I'm just going to leave them like they are. Okay, v du, u dv. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Okay, uv minus integral of v du equals integral of u dv. Alrighty, well that looks to me like the chain rule. Integral of u dv equals uv minus v du. That's it. That's where it comes from. So that's the chain rule, or not the chain rule, the, uh, that's integration by parts. Okay. So that's where integration by parts comes from. All right. So the last thing I want to do is give you an example. Now, now I just told you not all uh, uh, functions can be integrated using integration by parts. Some of them can, some of them can't. Well, clearly I'm going to give you an example that can. All right. So let's try this. Here's an example. Integral of x cosine x dx. All right, now, I have no idea how to do this, but I'm going to apply the uh, integration by parts. Now, big uh, important thing to remember here, integration by parts, when I apply that uh, function right here, or this process right here, I don't get the answer, okay, at least not, not directly. All I'm doing is taking this integral and turning it into that minus that other integral. In, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm taking an integral I don't know how to solve and turning it into one I do know how to solve. I'm transforming an, uh, uh, one problem into an equivalent problem. Transforming a problem I don't know how to solve into a problem I do know how to solve. I don't know how to solve that one. I've been to a lot of school and I don't know how to solve that one. Maybe you guys do, but I don't. Now, what I, if, if this is going to be solved using integration by parts, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to figure out what's u and what's dv. Well, u equals x. Okay, so that's, that's right there. And this part here is going to be dv. So dv equals cosine x dx. All right, now, again, where did this come from? This is, this is a standard example that shows up on the web and in textbooks and things like this. Um, one of the things you have to get used to when you're doing integration by parts is getting used to figuring out what u and dv are. Okay, so if that's u, then du equals dx. That's easy. And if that's dv, then v equals, make sure I get this right here, sine x. Okay. Well, how do I know that's true? Well, what's the, uh, what's the derivative of sine of x? Derivative of sine of x, cosine x dx. So there you go. So integral of u dv, which is that, okay, that's u dv, equals uv minus integral 
of V du. Okay, so all we're doing now is we're just now we're just turning the crank. We're just plugging some stuff in and seeing what comes out. All right, so u v. Okay, u is x, v is sine x. Okay, so that's u v right there. That's easy. Minus the integral of v, which is x, which is sine x, times du. Well, du equals dx. Okay, well look at what just happened. I took an integral I did not know how to solve and turned it into an equivalent one I did know how to solve. This one's easy. Okay, and so what I get out the other end is x sine x and the derivative or the integral of sine is negative cosine. And since this is an indefinite integral, I have the, the integration constant there. So let me write this out. All right, so there we go. Now we've done a couple of things here. Talked about why integration is so difficult. Why is it more difficult than uh, derivatives? Because it is. All right, we, so we know that now. Talked about where integration by parts comes from, and it turns out it's pretty simple. There's not much to it. And uh, did an example here uh, of integration by parts showing that what it really does, okay, because this is the form right here, it takes, when it works, it takes an integral we don't know how to solve, transforms it into an equivalent integral we do know how to solve. I don't know how to solve that, but solving that's easy. Okay, that's that transformation. So there you are. I hope this helps. And I'll see you next time.